Now, one of the WP crew asked how to create a featured section on a jet engine based real estate listing website. Well, I thought this was a great question. So I put this video together on how to do exactly that, both with jet engine and also with ACF with the little help from a free plugin. So let's open up jet engine and take a look. Oh, and if you're the impatient type and you just want to jump to the ACF way, well, there's full timestamps in the description so you can do that with ease. So let's start by taking a quick look at what we currently have and what I want to achieve. So this is our online real estate website. So you've seen me build this in the past. If you want to check out the video tutorial on how to build this entire site, I'll put a link in the description for you. However, what we currently have are just standard listings. And what I want to do is I want to create a featured listing section on here. And this is a good way of showing you how you can use some of the tools that ship with Jet Engine. And also we'll take a look at ACF a little later so I can demonstrate both methods of doing the same thing. So what we're going to do is create that new section and apply the filters and all those kinds of things to this so it shows us exactly what we want. Now the easiest way to go about doing something like this is to simply add a checkbox to our existing custom post type. So we're using Jet Engine at the moment, so we're going to come down to the Jet Engine options and into our post types. And inside there, we've got our property. Let's open that up and let's just add a new meta field in. So we're just going to add a new field in. So we'll open up our meta fields. And from there, we're going to scroll down. We're going to say new meta field. And we're just going to set this to be really simple and just say featured. There we go. We'll set that to be featured. We leave it as a field and we'll just change this then for a checkbox. So we just want to choose the option checkbox. And you can see we don't want to allow custom or get options from glossary and so on. We're just going to simply set this up to be yes. What we'll do is we'll set one field option and we're just going to set this to be yes. Label of yes and We'll just leave it unchecked. That's it. That's basically all we're going to do. Let's just go ahead now and update our post type and we are done. So the next thing we need to do is simply go in and set things up inside our actual properties. So let's hop over to our property section and inside there, there's our property. So let's grab this first property. And if we scroll down, you'll see we've got this new entry called featured. We can just select that and hit update on there. And we'll do the same again for just another one. We'll just randomly pick one doesn't really matter which one it is and we'll set the same inside there. So we've got a couple of properties now set up to be featured. So the whole point of doing it this way is it just gives us the ability to have something we can use for our query. So let's just hop back over onto our pages and we're going to just set this up on our front page of our site. So we're going to hop over, we're going to find our home page and we'll edit that with Elementor. So once we've got that, I'm going to scroll to the point where I want to insert this. We're going to just drop in a new section. We'll just apply a little bit of style into this. So it stands out a little bit. We'll just set the background type to be something like white. So it's a little bit set off the background and we'll just add a little bit of padding top and bottom. So say 30 pixels top and bottom. Okay, next thing, let's drop a heading inside there and we're just gonna call this featured properties. And now we're gonna drop in a listing. Now, the nice thing when you're working with Jet Engine is when you create a listing like I've done in the original video on how to create the listing for this particular property, that's the template we can use. And we can reference that template over and over and over again because it's all dynamically generated the content inside there. So we just create that once and we can use it in lots of locations. And that's exactly what we can do here. So we're going to come to the listing and we're going to do a search for property. And we want the property listing. And you can see immediately that pulls in pretty much what looks like an exact duplicate of this minus this sort of injected article thing. So what we need to do is we need to change that over. So first thing I want to do is set this to only display three properties in this example. And we'll just do equal height, just everything sort of ties in and marries up nicely. Now what we can do is we can come down to the post query and inside there we can now set up a query to apply to this particular set of properties. So we're going to add an item. We're going to open up the option and we're going to choose meta query because this is going to use one of the meta fields that we've just created, the featured checkbox. So we'll select that option. It says, okay, what's the key or the name ID? Well, that's featured. So we'll just drop that inside there and you can see nothing shows up because we haven't set any operator up for this. So we know the value we inserted was yes for the property being listed as a featured property. So we'll just drop in yes inside there and you can see operator is equal to yes. So you kind of think, well, surely that should work. Kind of weird. What we're going to do is we're going to say not equal to, and you can see that now pulls up the two properties that we just selected to be featured. So it's kind of weird, a little bit quirky, not too sure why it's doing it this way, but it works. Just bear that in mind. So it's featured is not equal to yes. And for some reason that's showing us the properties that we set up. So now if we hit update on there, 
and we'll hop over to our test page. We'll refresh this, and we now have our featured property section inserted underneath. And if we want to add another, a third property, let's just hop back over to our properties. So we'll just come out of Elementor, hop into our properties, and we'll just find another property. So we'll say, let's go for this relaxing apartment, and we'll scroll down, and we'll set this one to be featured yes as well, and we'll just hit update on there, hop back over, refresh this, and there's our relaxing apartment. So you can go ahead if you want to, you can reorder these, you can set up additional filters and queries and things, however you want to kind of work with it. But that's just how easy it is to create these featured kind of listings. And you could use this in so many different ways. That's how we do it when we work with Jet Engine. Okay, now we've seen how easy it is to achieve this with Jet Engine. Let's turn our focus to ACF and see how we can achieve a very similar result. So for our ACF example, we're basically going to be using the normal built-in WordPress post type. So I've got some additional fields, so I'm going to open that up. I've created a location and a price field. Now currently this is associated with the property post type. We'll just change that to be with posts, just for ease in this example. We're going to add a new field in, and then we're going to call this feature. And we'll do the same underneath. And we're going to change the field type from being text. And in this example, normally we would use the checkbox option, but we can't use that for this particular setup. I'll explain that in a moment why. We're going to choose the true or false. So we're going to select that option. And if you want to drop in instructions, you could do that and a message, those kinds of things. We'll leave everything as it is there, though. So that's our new field inserted. Let's close that down, make sure everything is set up. Post type is equal to post. And we're going to hit update. So now if we hop over into our posts, we can take a look inside there and let's just choose one of these. And if we scroll down, we now have a new section that allows us to choose whether this is a featured property. So we're simply gonna hit yes on there and we'll click update. So we now have at least one property the set as being featured. Now, out of the box, we can't actually use the built-in elemental functions to be able to build this out. So what we need to do is we need to add another plugin in, but this is a completely free plugin. And let me just quickly show you what that plugin is. So it's the Advanced Post Queries by Shabdi. Now, if you've ever seen any of my front end sort of dashboard videos where I use ACF, you'll know that I've used this particular plugin inside that for various different reasons. It's been updated recently and has a lot more options. And this is one of those little plugins that if you do anything with ACF and dynamic content, this is one you realistically want to have on your radar. So I've already gone ahead and installed that. And I've created a really simple basic page to hold our content. So all I've done is I've created a page that has the normal posts widget, which is part of Elementor Pro, and we've got that inserted into the. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this like we did before. We'll set this to three posts, for example, and we'll leave it to cards. But you could, if you wanted to, use some like Elementor custom skin to create custom layouts for this. But we're going to come down to the query section and inside there you've got your normal options at the top but unfortunately we can't use those to create a more advanced query and that's where the advanced query options comes in so let's just click on the plus next to the advanced query options and choose custom field value can I open that up this now allows us to choose what we want to do so custom field value and we've got several other options like i say this is a really powerful little plugin and something that's super useful we're going to choose the custom field value option and then we've got to drop in the field name so this is where we're going to put in feature which is what we called our custom field name and then we've got to drop in the value and this is the reason why we can't currently use the checkboxes they're not supported with this plugin so hopefully shabti if you're watching this Please give us checkboxes. It just makes it slightly more logical. However, with that true or false, we can simply say if it's true, it's going to have a value of one. That's it. That's all we need to know. So we're going to drop one inside there, and there's our two properties. So what we've done is simply apply a custom query to this, set the custom field value is feature, the field name, and the value is one. So that's it. That's all you need to do. We can hit update on there, and we now have pretty much the same as you had inside Jet Engine when we were setting up inside there. We now have a featured listing that you could use anywhere on your site to combine it with normal listings. So for example, if we wanted to drop in a normal listing alongside this, we could just select the options. We'll come back to our posts. We'll do a search for post inside here, grab our post widget, drop that inside there, and you can see there's all our posts. We'll change the styling to cards, and you can see we can just easily reorder this. Let's just come to our navigator, drag our section up above there, and then we could just do like we did earlier, grab a header, drop that inside there, and just name this Featured Posts. 
So pretty cool, really easy to do. Hit update on there, and we've now created our featured post setup with both Jet Engine and with advanced custom fields and a free plugin. So now you've seen how to create a featured listing section on your website, well check out this playlist next. It'll show you how to build a fully featured property listing website with front end forms and loads, loads more. Now if you found value in this video, why not hit that thumbs up button to tell YouTube that you really enjoyed it. It really does help me out. However, if you didn't get value from it, that's perfectly fine. You can hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.